Okay, this podcast is brought to you by Scott Kennedy at State Farm. Thank you so much for sponsoring this podcast. Scott has actually got an awesome deal going on right now. It's called Quotes for Good. So if you go get a quote, regardless of what your situation is, if you go get a quote from Scott, he's going to donate $10 to uh, the Mills on Wheels project through United Way. So go check him out. Go get a quote. You don't have to go with him. You just have to go get a quote from him. Uh, but he obviously he would love for you to go through him. And, and who knows, maybe you'll save some money. So go check out Scott Kennedy. You can find him on Facebook. You can find him you know, online. Just go check him out. Go get a quote. Thank you, Scott, for sponsoring this podcast. Let's get this thing started. Welcome to another Paris, Texas, a podcast. This is a podcast where you get to listen to people's stories, people that have either influenced or lived in the city of Paris, Texas. I love hearing their stories, and I can't wait for you to hear the next guest. All right, guys. So we have a very special guest today. As always, I'm always excited for every guest, but I'm super excited for this guest. He's <laughs> shaking his head. He's super excited. I'm super excited. I really am super excited. <laughs> uh, Ty England, what's up, bud? Uh, nothing much. Just been hanging out. Uh, I got a week off here at home, so hanging out with the kiddo, going to the lake this weekend for Labor Day, and it's going to be a good time. Awesome. So uh, tell everybody what your profession is, just in case they just happen to not know uh well everybody usually calls me ty especially if you're from the paris texas area but around the monster truck world they call me tristan england which is my first name and uh i drive monster trucks professionally for monster jam uh if you have not heard of me my monster truck is the Earthshaker monster jam truck it is a dump truck a uh, concept of a dump truck and you know kids love it i mean Millions of fans uh, all over the country, all over the world, uh, seeing everything like that, week in and week out, and you know, you might get a couple weekends off a year, and when I'm not in the truck, I'm usually out on our place, you know, my dad and I have a farm, our family has a farm, and that's what we do, we just tend to cattle and do country stuff, I mean, that's where I'm from, I'm a country kid, and I'm from... Okay, so country kid, you're from where? Where are you from? Where you? Where are you born at? Uh, I was born in Paris, Texas, but we live right outside of Paris, which is Powderly, and you know it's just country living. Country living. So where? Like, what school did you? Is there a school in Powderly? There is. It's. Uh, it used to be Northamar, like the old high school. Yep. And it is Aaron Parker Elementary. Gotcha. And that is where I went to elementary school, and then. When I finished there, I came to town. And you and you finished at North Lamar in, in town. Uh, what was your thing? Like, what was, like, did you hunt? Did you, what was your thing? I mean, I always hunt. Uh, my dad and I love duck hunting, love fishing. Uh, love working on the place and things like that. You know, growing up as a kid, that was just something you did. And then uh, when I got to town, I always loved playing soccer. And... Got to town and, you know, played soccer. And then once I got into high school, it was, you know, I always did dirt bikes and four-wheelers and things like that, anything off-road. But then Dad was like, man, we need to we need to get the dirt track racing. And I was like, eh, that sounds kind of interesting. So about 12 years old is when I got my first race car. And I beat all the windows out of it. It was a Volkswagen uh, GTI. It was ugly. Uh we actually got it from my buddy Kent Whitaker, which if you know him, he works at Paris Harley. It's a small town, so everybody knows everybody. But Kent, thank you for the Volkswagen. I beat the windows out of it, and we put a roll cage in it, uh, put a seat in it, and that was my first race car. And took it out to the Paris uh, Raceway out there in Patville, and that's where I got you know started with dirt, I guess you could say, besides the dirt bikes and the four wheelers and. After about a year, uh, we decided that that was too slow. So we went ahead and skipped about two or three classes and just went ahead and bought a sport mod. And, I mean, you know, trying to learn that, going from as slow as I was going and not getting sideways, 
it's weird on a dirt track, man. It's 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 a feeling like no other turning right to go left. It, it's a it's an awesome feeling, but uh, I do miss dirt track. But you know, we graduated to bigger and better things. But someday I'm gonna get me a dirt car again, and I'm gonna go fast, turn right, go left. Uh, did so was your dad racing back then? Absolutely. Uh, dad had a modified. Uh, I think it was car 28. Uh, we were doing it side by side there for a little bit, but uh, he was always uh, offshore working. And then when he wasn't offshore working, uh, you know, when he was at work, I was going to the track and my mom would go with me when, you know, I was like 16 or something like that. And then dad would come home and we'd go to the racetrack together. And it was just, it's a family, of, you know, affair. Like everybody went. Yeah. Everybody cheered you on and it was it was nothing but help in the pits and that's just that's just how we did things as a family. Awesome. And it's just awesome. So graduating high school, you're still racing. Uh we had just when I graduated high school we had just sold my sport mod and we were building a brand new chassis. And I decided that uh I actually had a uh good scholarship to OSU to play golf mm-hmm. and because I love golf it's, uh, but I turned it down uh, do you play golf in high school I did awesome. uh, were you good I was all right I was decent I wasn't the best of course I mean there was guys that were out there that they've been doing it their whole lives and I think I started when I was like eight and they held a golf club when they were like three <laughs> which is uh which is insane but uh graduated high school turned down the offer to go to osu had other offers to go off to you know different states different cities and i just decided to stay home and i actually uh, started working with uh maximum elevation off-road i was taking classes at pjc and you know talking to colin hadley with maximum elevation and Mm -hmm. things like that i was like man this is this is fun you know this is what i want to do when i grow up who knows if i ever will and i'm still not but uh you know i'd like to own my own shop and do off-road lift kits and you know accessories and that's kind of what i had my plan set on after about a couple months uh of not racing i missed it uh couldn't get enough of it i i had to go back to it uh, did some college courses and things like that. I was always the kid that took the summer courses, never took a break, always on the go, always playing sport. And it was just all I was doing was working, and I decided that, you know, there's got to be something else. Mm-hmm. So uh, I went to a show, and I think back then it was uh, Reliance Stadium in Houston, which is now NRG Stadium. Uh, and I went there, and... For some odd reason, my helmet and my fire suit was in the holler, you know, that, that Dad takes to the shows, his Freightliner. So we get out there to the show, and they've got legend cars. And I don't know if you know what a legend car is, but it's got a slap shift, uh, typically like a 600cc motor in it, and, of, of course, a clutch. So, like, it's a crotch rocket motor. And uh, then it's like a small tube chassis with just a... It's kind of like an old school car, fiberglass body on it. And I had never driven any of these cars before. And the owner, Paul Adams, came up to me and dad had talked to him. And he said, hey, your dad tells me that you've done, you know, like modifieds and things like that on dirt. And this just so happens to be at a Monster Jam show. And so I'm like, all right, what's the catch? And he's like, would you like to drive one of these cars? And I said, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> So he just told me to go out there and just kind of learn the car and just stay in the back and enjoy myself and just, you know, take care of the car. Absolutely, sir. Went out there. Somehow I ended up in second place. These guys are asphalt racers. They don't know a lot about dirt. They gave me a run for their money, but I didn't take it easy on that car. It's just not who I am. So uh, I ended up getting second place. First ever time driving that car. Never even knew how it handled or anything. It's low profile to the ground and everything else, and the suspension sucked. It was terrible. Uh, ended up finishing second, and they were impressed. So uh, not only were 
was the owner of the legend car impressed so it was monster jam because they saw like a like a fire inside of me and they knew that i was 18 years old and they knew i had what it takes so first we leave there at reliance stadium and uh paul adams had offered me the opportunity to drive the legend car but it wasn't on dirt it was on asphalt and i don't know if you guys have ever seen talladega nights but when he gets hurt and he tries to come back and he's out there on the track and he's telling everybody to slow down that's how i felt on the asphalt because those guys were kicking my butt i was kicking their butt on dirt but they were kicking mine on asphalt and that's that's obviously nothing that i was prepared for i'm not an asphalt guy i grew up in the dirt and that's that's just who I am and going out there on the asphalt I realized that asphalt was not for me I love watching NASCAR but I will never become a NASCAR driver that's just it's crazy it's a whole different animal for asphalt but feeling like you're on the dirt sideways and hauling butt is one of the best feelings ever I mean like I said turning right to go left it's a pretty crazy feeling but you got to know where your throttle foot is and don't ever touch the brake because if you touch the brake then you're going to go slow you're going to go slow you're going to slow down yourself and um after that I uh, got to the house you know I was kind of contemplating where we were where we were at with the dirt modified and uh I had actually gotten an email about coming to Monster Jam University which is located in Paxton Illinois and you are trained by the 11-time world champion Tom Mintz, which is a huge deal. I mean, like going to the first Monster Jam show ever, I was five years old, and seeing people like Tom Mintz, you know, going insane, doesn't care what happens to his body, he's going out there and he's doing it for the fans. I mean, that's just awesome. I mean, as a kid, you're just like, your jaw drops. You have no idea what's going on. He's got zoomies on the truck like a 565 and the thing's loud you got your headphones on and you're still in awe and that's just a feeling that you have your whole life I mean if you follow the monster trucks and it's always amazing to see what drivers do year in and year out and uh, I, I got my opportunity I went up there Tom knew who I was because my dad was actually a crew guy on one of the teams outside of Houston which is called Flame Motorsports at the time and he was a crew guy for a couple seasons, and then he ended up saying, you know what, it's it's my turn. So he bought his own chassis, created the Big Kahuna, which everybody knows my dad as the Big Kahuna because that was his nickname for quite some time. And I remember back in 2000, I think it was, when he had his big red Ford and like a 22-inch lift and 44-inch boggers, and it was red. I hate the color red, but it was cool. So, I mean, everybody knew who my dad was, and it, it was just awesome. And uh, him building that truck and me helping him build it was one of the coolest things ever. I mean, that's just like, it was a huge, you know, father-son bonding thing. And a lot of late nights, uh, a couple energy drinks later, mom had homemade meals. We were right there in the shop and working all night long on that truck just to get it ready for uh, the first quarter of 2014 I believe it was and just going that's that's when uh, 2014 is when I went to that race in Reliance Stadium with him mm -hmm. and did the legend cars but uh, you know just watching him his success with the monster truck and him you know getting better uh, each show uh, is is amazing and then helping him out every week uh, you know, anytime I got to leave school or I didn't have anything going on with sports, I was always helping him, and it was just an awesome feeling. And always growing up around motorsports, it was it's just been great. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, so you get to college. You you went to uh, Monster Truck Academy, Monster Jam University, Monster Jam University. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that like? Like you just. You were there know, multiple? How many students were there? Uh, at that particular time, there's usually only typically two to three people at a time okay. because there's only four chassis that are stationed up there for trainees to drive. And I was nervous. I mean, 
you know, I've been watching this forever, and it's what I wanted. And going out there, you got the eleven-time world champion telling you what to do, and then after he told me to do a figure eight, he just kind of told me to do stuff myself. I mean, he didn't, you know, he didn't lecture me on anything. Uh, there was a couple touchy subjects, you know, with like touchy as in when to get off the throttle, when to hit brakes. Uh, things like that but Cause that's different than dirt I'm absolutely sure. i mean you don't even want to touch brakes when you're in the dirt you know dirt track racing but uh this was definitely a different animal i mean you're going from like 400 to 600 horsepower to 1500 and 66 inch tires and thank god for those shocks because 12,000 pounds is pretty heavy yeah and uh and all the safety equipment from simpson and everybody else and, uh Hans, uh, it's just without them, we couldn't do what we do today. Uh, but I went out there and I tried my best, and I asked the other drivers. It was uh, my buddy Tony Oates, which drives Soldier Fortune Black Ops, and then uh, Lindsey Reed, and she drives Scooby Doo now. And I and these were classmates. You could call it that, classmates. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, it was only. You know, they were already training. Right. There was when no, you got up there. It, I mean, it was still Marshall University, but they have graduated. They are out of the trainee stage. Okay. Everything else. So, I finished all my trainee stuff within a day. Wow. We uh, went to lunch, came back. Uh, we rode to lunch in Tom's Bronco. Her, uh, it was a Blazer, and it's got 60, 60 inch, I think it was 60 inch tires. It might have been 54. I hadn't been there in a while. It's been a couple of years, but uh, went to lunch in that thing. And Paxson is a small town, and Tom just rolls through the whole town, uh, you know, with no top on the blazer and waving at everybody, and everybody knows who Tom is. It's almost like the mayor of the town. So, I mean, it's, that's just really cool. And then, uh, but I, I'm asking Lindsay and Tony, I'm like, man, you think I'm doing all right? You know, you think they'll call me back? Like, how's this audition thing going? Like, what do you guys think? And they're like, well, you're already running with us the second day, so I think you're doing fine. <laughs> you know, uh, so I got home. I had landed from Chicago. Uh, they told me it'd probably be a couple of weeks before they call me back. I got a phone call as soon as I landed in Dallas. And they said, hey, sorry, Tristan, for the wait, but uh, can you go back next week to Paxton? And I was like, yeah, for what? Oh, just uh, more more training skills and things like that. And I'm, Absolutely, I'm there. So that kind of got me started with everything. But um, I went back a few more times, and then we had something called, uh, it, it was like a trainee week. And it was eight drivers with uh, one backup. And uh, they told me when I got there that week that I would uh, be driving one of the trucks. And so, you know, I'm, I'm in shock and awe about the whole thing. They're like, you're going to be doing this tour. You're going to be doing this, this many shows. And everything, everything you want to hear. Then they gave me a microphone. Here you go. And I look like Ricky Bobby with my hands up because I was that country kid that could not interview for anything. I was just sitting there staring at the cameras and I mean it wasn't like a show. It was just in front of, you know, our bosses, which is kind of important. Oh yeah, that's very important. <laughs> so we're out there in the middle of this pasture in Paxton, Illinois, actually a cornfield. Did they prep you or they just hand, they just handed you a microphone? They wanted to see what I would do. Oh so it was, it was a test. I mean right now I found my personality you know, I can talk on a mic all day long, but then I couldn't even tell you anything about monster trucks because I was just stand still. And, you know, we tried to do uh, training stuff with the interviews and things like that because not only does it take just driving to get you a job. You got to have a personality. You got to have a personality. You got to be able to be on that mic. And, you know, so many people have taught me so much through the monster truck community and interviews have been one of the 
big topics because they know that I sucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we go through training. Everything's fine. I don't, you know, I don't get told any different that I'm driving a truck or not. So I go about my week. I get home. We have a, you know, a meeting the in two weeks for everyone to come together. You do video interviews for the season, mm-hmm. season previews, you know, things like that. And they call me right before I fly out, and they say, Hey, Tristan, you know, we feel like you're not ready for the position because of your interview skills. Uh, you know, we're going to let somebody else fill the position, and you'll be backup driver, and you'll just wait your turn. And I was like, okay, you know, I feel discouraged. Yeah. Feel terrible. Uh, but I'm still going out on tour uh, with a you know like a stadium crew. I'm learning a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm humbled by it. You know. And this was what year? 2016. 2016. So I did the trainee stuff in uh, 15, and this is coming up on my fifth year of racing monster trucks. And but that first year, I felt discouraged and it was awful. Uh, I was always upset, and then I ended up getting a phone call that said, hey, you need to go do some media in Chicago at Rosemont at the mm-hmm. Allstate Arena. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's something big. I mean, it might be an arena, but that's a big deal. So I fly to Chicago next week, and I get there, and they're like, all right, we need you to hop up in here. And I need you to do some laps, do a couple jumps, and do some media with this truck. You wouldn't believe what truck it was. It was GD31, which is Gravedigger. And it was driven by my buddy Covenard at the time. And the first truck you ever drive, I mean, you're going to remember it, obviously, right. but Gravedigger? So I was freaking out. But, uh,. Like uh, like I had said, Cole Venard, if you guys don't know Cole Venard, he drove Gravedigger for a couple of years. He was a champion. Uh, he only has one leg. It's pretty crazy. He now is the driver of the Black Pearl Monster Truck. Uh, but to not have a left leg and drive the truck like he does and to even be a champion. Impressive. It, it's, it's crazy. That's super it's impressive. Uh, but I ended up. You know, staying there that weekend, watching the shows. There was five shows in a weekend. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we do that. That's normal. But it's not only driving the Monster Jam truck. It's driving the Monster Jam Speedster and the Monster Jam ATV. So that's three vehicles that you're driving. And you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off, changing gear. Like going back and forth to vehicle to vehicle. And it's a lot of stress on your body. I mean, you know, it may not seem like it, but when 12,000 pounds hits the ground it's a lot of weight you can only imagine and touching back on the subject i was earlier with the shocks thank god we have those because it would hurt um but i went there that weekend did the media like they asked got to drive grave digger did you do do better with the media side of things yes just go Uh, around uh, I, i guess it was just a you know i practiced not gonna lie i was in the mirror at home when i got home and i would watch everybody else's interviews and i was talking to myself and it was not gonna happen again no absolutely not when the opportunity came to me it was it was mine i wasn't gonna let it go so being humbled by the experience that i've been through and everything i just when it was my shot it was my shot and i wasn't gonna let anybody take it away from me and i went out uh to watch the rest of the shows and if anybody had gotten injured which never happens I mean, we got the best safety equipment there is possible um, I went out there and uh, you know watched the rest of the shows in Chicago and at Rosemont and uh, I ended up getting a call when I got home from that weekend about coming to drive El Toro Loco I don't like that truck at all I mean it uh, yeah, it's a bull. Yeah, I'm from the country, but that's just not me. So I'm like, absolutely. You know, I'll drive the wheels off that thing. So I get to my first show, and they tell me, you know, to to calm down. 
Like, don't get crazy. I got crazy. <laughs> so, you know, they they set me down. They tell me, you know, you need to you need to calm down and you know don't get too wild. It was your first show, so I was like, you know, okay. And I knew, you know, I was getting wild. Not gonna I, happen. I knew, I knew what I was doing wrong, so that wasn't gonna happen again. But Covenard taught me a lot. Barry Musauer, uh, Drive Zombie, taught me a lot that year. And uh, I think my last show with them, I did about four weekends of shows with that crew on that tour. And I learned a lot from them. And then I didn't get a call back forever. And so then the point of getting discouraged again Mm -hmm. and everything and, you know, not getting a call back is like, what? What is going on here? So they call me, I think it was August of 2016, and they said, Tristan, we have got some news for you. And I was, you know, I'm like, I don't care what it is, you know, like, tell me, I haven't heard from you guys in months. I'm ready, whatever it is. And they said, we've got a truck coming out, and it's called Earthshaker, and we want you to drive it. We want you to be the face of it. We want you to, like, promote this truck and everything. Your interview skills have gotten a lot better. Uh, Your driving's gotten a lot better, and we just feel like you would be perfect to suit this truck. I'm, like, you know, silent on the other end of the phone. Like, is this for real? Checking the caller ID. Like, is this my boss? And it was, so I'm, you know, I'm excited and tell dad about it. He's all, you know, excited about it too. I'm actually on a tour and, uh, it was just crazy. So I kicked it off in Birmingham, Alabama, the tour in 2017. And when you need to go to a tour, it's like 12 weeks of battling it out for points, mm-hmm. every single race and every single event and there's no breaks. I mean, when I got home, I would watch videos of what everybody else was doing because you don't always get to see a show when you're at the show working it. So I would watch everybody else and I'd watch their, you know, their moves, if they had anything different, or I'd watch how the suspension would react. And that's when I came across uh, my buddy had a simulator and he helped me download all the files and things like that. And I downloaded it on my laptop, and I took it with me everywhere. And the simulator actually helped me out because it's got, you know, the physics of the shocks that are working, the tires, uh, just pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got uh, all the horsepower works like it should, Um, gears, uh, unlock and unlock, or lock and unlock the differentials and everything like that. I mean, breakage, the whole nine yards, and... It really helped me out as a driver to see what was going on because my dad taught me everything about mechanics, you know, anything that was mechanically wrong with a truck. But nobody really taught me how to drive these trucks. They just kind of like... Put you you in them. In a sense, threw me the keys. Yeah. But there's no keys. So uh, I kind of just learned on my own. I mean, people gave me tips and hints of what to do or what not to do or I could do this I could do that but I pretty much taught myself how to drive and nearing the end of the season I was starting to get better every weekend and started doing tricks and the moonwalks and everything like that and you know just growing every week and doing nothing but monster trucks when you get home because when I flew home it wasn't like laid back, sit on the couch, mm-hmm. play on your simulator. It was work on dad's truck because it's broken. And because he had done a show that weekend and he would drive all the way home. And it's not like, you know, it wasn't easy for dad. It's never easy for dad because he doesn't fly in and just drive the truck and beat it up and, and have out. a crew to fix yeah. it. Uh, but dad drives cross country extremely tired you know spending his hard earned money to fix that truck because he wants to do it for the fans Mm -hmm. and that's the whole point of this I mean it's it's always for the fans it always has been and I remember being a kid watching this stuff and being a fan and being that fan I don't want to consider myself a super fan but I know a lot about this sport 
But, uh, you know, these fans are crazy. I mean, the stories that I hear, them coming through my line, and, you know, they're like, oh, we saw you uh, two weeks ago in Uniondale, and we just decided to come over here to New York, New Jersey and come hang out with you. And I was like, you know what? I remember you guys. I don't I don't remember names very well. No, I remember a face. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I remember people that came to see me uh, in 16 when I drove out Toro Loco, and they're like, hey, you're still that ugly kid. Tristan England that drove El Toro Loco. You know, they'll come up to me now. I mean, they don't say that, but that's what they're thinking. That's what they're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... That's awesome. So you've been two years in Earthshaker. Uh, three. Three years in Earthshaker. Three coming up on... Yeah, three. Mm-hmm. Uh, to finish 2017 season, uh, if you guys don't know what World Finals is, it's been hosted for 19 straight years. Uh in Las Vegas, Nevada, and um, is now moved to Orlando, Florida as of this year. We just uh, wrapped up in May the World Finals for the first time. It was World Finals 20 uh, there in Orlando. But uh, going out there in 2017, I was offered to drive in the Double Down Showdown, which is 16 rookies that go out there, and I wasn't considered a true rookie because i did shows in 2016 Mm -hmm. so there was no way of me like winning rookie of the year or anything but um i was nominated for like most improved and uh two wheel tricks and things like that and um you know it was just it was an awesome weekend 21st birthday uh what better place to celebrate than las vegas um uh, my birthday was the 22nd. The race was on the 23rd. Uh, beating eight rounds of drivers was one of the craziest things ever. Because, I mean, you are a world champion once you won that. And it was my first full season in a brand new truck. They didn't know if they wanted to keep the truck, you know, a, an actual name. They didn't know how it was going to, you know, do with fans. Mm-hmm. So. Winning that event kind of put my mark in Monster Jam. And it being my first full season and my family there, it was just an awesome experience. It was an emotional experience. I mean, I can't hide that at all. Uh, Dad was watching me from the stands, and they only allow on Double Down Night. uh, Each side of the stadium, they don't let you go around the backside. They just close it off because they don't sell as many tickets to the Double Down because they want more people to show up on Friday and Saturday for the mm-hmm. racing and the freestyle event. So this is Thursday night, and Dad is standing on the like end of the stadium where you're not allowed to stand, and he's just standing by himself. He said, he said he didn't want anybody else to talk to him. He was just watching the turns and watching how everybody else was racing. And he told me when I beat Cynthia Gautier, which is one of our great friends, she drives Monster Mutt Dalmatian, uh, she was the pick to win that event because she was so fast in qualifying and so consistent because it was her third year, I think it was, in the Double Down Showdown. So I don't even know what round I'm in. I don't. I told my crew guy, uh, his name is Brandon Fiersdorf, and he was my crew guy for three years. I told him, I said, dude, I don't care what round I'm in. I don't care what my times are. If we win, we win. We lose, we lose. We're here for a good time. Yep. And he said, okay, sounds good. So every time I got to the starting line, which Vegas, you start outside of the stadium, go through a little chicane when you get the green light, go down a straightaway, picking up speeds like 75 miles an hour. Your eyeballs are shaking. You're going so fast. Tires are out of balance, of course. And then you take that J-hook, and you can see your opponent from the other side. And that's that's the deciding factor. I mean, if you if you look over and you see that guy's beating you, or if he's behind you, you lose track of where you are on the track. Even though it's just a simple turn, you'll screw up. And I never looked until I guess I got bored. Like, I 
kept going rounds and everything, and they gave me lane choice, and I, I told them to put me in that left lane, and uh, or the right lane. I told them to put me in the right lane so I can make that left turn because I'm used to making left turns. And uh, you know, I go through Thunder Alley. When you go through Thunder Alley and you enter the stadium, pyro went off. And I'm looking up and I'm thinking, what the heck? And I'm still running my race. I get down to the J hook. I turn. I look over. I don't see anybody there. I'm like, dang, he's fast. He must have already beat me. <laughs> I mean, I'm driving this truck into the ground and this guy already beat me. And that wasn't the case. I crossed the finish line. Pyro went off everywhere. I exit the track like I'm going to the next round so I'm like cool I drive out I get almost to the starting line and my crew guy goes what are you doing we just won and I'm like what no get get out of here dude that we didn't just win you know no big deal <laughs> and uh he's like no turn around and get on get back on the floor let's celebrate so I went and I parked the truck on the floor and that was just a crazy feeling that that's where all the emotions came out dad jumped over the tech officials to get to me like all the tv crew everybody and that was just a it was an awesome feeling and then you know getting to go to an event that you watched since you were you know five years old and going to vegas since you were seven to watch this world finals is it's a feeling like no other i mean it's like you waited your whole life for this and being able to win that championship and bring it home, which was hauled by dad. I made him haul it from Vegas all the way home while I took a plane home and waited on him to get back so we could work on his truck. Anyway, uh, it was just an awesome feeling. And then going to get, I mean, if you if you win the double down, then you get to do racing with the big dogs, and then you get to do freestyle. So when I got to do freestyle, I did my first backflip, and it was just insane never done it before and nailed it and we had electrical issues with water being on the track but that's besides the point i had fun and it's been fun ever since i mean i mean it's always been fun but it's just exciting that you know people know who you are when you get to the show because i was a new kid on the block in earth shaker nobody really knew who i was and I was making a name for it. And once I made a name for it, people knew who they were paying to come and see when they bought tickets. They knew Earthshaker's that guy that's a wild man. He gets on the front two wheels. He knows what he's doing. He's going to burn down the house tonight. And that's all I heard in 2018 when I did the West Coast Series. And I won that championship. And that was an awesome feeling. And then going out this year and winning the uh, East Coast Series Championship I mean it was just a feeling like no other this year I had to work hard for it uh, there was a guy his name is Blake Granger and he is extremely good on ATVs I'm not the best at it but I did good enough to get my points up but he really made me work for it I think he won almost every race in ATVs that's how good he was but uh, it was a fun year and Fifth year coming up on racing. I think we could repeat it. Who knows what's going to happen. But I got my little boy now. Uh, he was born on the 6th of June this year. And I hope that he can follow in my footsteps and bring him more trophies than dad can because I'm running out of room in my office and he needs to fill up some shelves in there for me because. I'm just running out of room. So you plan on being being just like your dad and, and as soon as he gets to the right age, making him race and not making him, but doing <laughs> races with him. You know what I mean? Absolutely. When I was three, I was about three and a half. I think dad bought me my first dirt bike. That's really what started it. Uh, you know, by the time he's probably three, he'll probably have his own mini you know, trophy cart, Me, trophy something cart, like yeah. that, you know, something not usual for a child. It's awesome. Uh, you know, custom pawns and helmet, you know, whatever, because 
if he doesn't like it, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. But if he likes it, Dad and I already told him he's in trouble because he's got he's got everything he wants already. And he's, he's got only a dad and a grandpa that's gonna call him, show him the ropes. Call him pops. Pops. Yeah. I mean, he's got enough grains here. We can call him pops. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's definitely gonna be fun. I and mean, we've got all the resources we need for anything you can think of uh, out of the shop. So. He's going to have a crazy childhood. I can only imagine. <laughs> only imagine. So, go, moving forward, you're, you're wanting to three-peat the, the championship. Who doesn't? Who doesn't want to do that? Three times in a row. Are there any other uh, uh, um, achievements you want to uh, you strive for, you want to go for? Um, I mean, I want more world championships, of course. That's kind of the whole point of Racing. wanting to do yeah. it is be a champion uh it's different aspect than a stadium show uh to do the arenas but it's a lot more fun to me to do the arenas mm-hmm. i get more seat time than everybody else i have a lot more fun yeah uh, do more shows and i drive more than one thing i mean yeah the changing part not a fan of it but that's part of it yeah <laughs> Part of I mean, it. running halfway across the arena to change it to quad gear and then run back and then do your three races and then go back after you done beat and banged on each other and yeah. you're out of breath, you're tired. I mean, I don't know how Supercross guys do it. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're out there forever, and we only do like 25 laps, and I'm sitting there thinking, wow, that's just crazy. Uh, but main thing is I always drive that truck on the ground for the fans because mm-hmm. they paid their hard-earned money to come out there and watch. Mm-hmm. We'll make sure they get their hard-earned money. It's awesome. It's awesome. Thank you for being on my podcast. I loved it. It's, it's my first time. First first podcast. <laughs> uh, where can people find you if they want to follow you? Uh, so I'm not typically on Twitter, but my Twitter is tyengland 14 uh, my Instagram is where I'm usually at, and that's where I usually get back to anybody that wants to be in contact with me, uh, direct message wise. And uh, it's England underscore six point seven. I'm actually working on trying to get my full name there, but this guy doesn't want to give it up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if someone already has Thai England, uh, Tristan yeah. or Tristan England, okay. Yeah. So people that come to the show, they they hear the Tristan England, they don't. Know who Ty England is? They know, so that's, that's a home. That's a homeboy thing. That's, that's my secret identity. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, alter ego. Not really. <laughs> There's no alter ego. I'm the same guy all the time. That's awesome. Uh, but Facebook, I mean Ty England, Tristan England, whichever one you want to follow. If you got Tristan England, just hit the like on the page if you'd like. Uh, Ty England, I'll add you back as a friend. Whatever, just keep keep up. We got a busy, busy schedule coming up, so it's going to be a fun season. Awesome. Hope to see you guys at a show. I should be close to home this year, so that'll be new. That'll That'll be be. a first time there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for being on my podcast. That was an amazing story. Um, and I, I've never been. I was never. I grew up without TV, so I didn't have Monster anything in my life. Uh, Well, we just had a little bit of Wi-Fi. We didn't really have. When I was when I was a kid, there wasn't Wi-Fi. There wasn't a lot of Wi-Fi oh. going around. Oh, I didn't know you were that old. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, so uh, I I kind of missed out on that, but um, I love watching it. It's the coolest thing. And uh, now, sorry, not to jump back in, but you're like known for the two wheel thing, that right? Like that's like one of your strong suits. Well, so my buddy Cody Saucier, which drives Monster Energy. Uh, monster jam truck he perfected the stoppy mm-hmm. which is getting the truck to the front two wheels and just trying to stand it up there now ryan anderson took the stoppy and made it to what it is now a moonwalk okay which is getting the truck on the front two wheels and putting it in reverse it's not an easy feat i mean people think that they can do it all day long and they will roll over but 
it's it's actually pretty difficult because you've got a bunch of weight in the rear of the truck, mm-hmm. which is the motor, and then of course you got housing and fuel cell and all your fans and I mean the transmissions in the middle of the truck and the transfer case, which I mean that's that's pretty much where all the weight is. But I mean you got weight everywhere all over the truck, the chassis and everything is twelve thousand pounds total, and you're trying to get all that extra weight up. Mm-hmm. So I mean it's it's a force. That you have to make happen, and then you have to critique it. You gotta have the skill. And I went out to the world finals in May, and I did four moonwalks for almost four minutes. I think it was a little, it was a couple seconds shy of four minutes, and mm-hmm. that's the limit that they gave us was a minute on each attempt for the four. And you know, everybody thought that was pretty well. I mean, I was in the lead in the second round and I'm thinking you know I'm not saying that anybody can just come out here and somebody's going to pull something out of their pocket yeah like somebody's about to do something insane nobody did anything crazy and then Tom Mintz the guy that was at Monster Jam University I talked about earlier Mm -hmm. this old cat came out and did the two wheel that nobody else had done on the main jump because my cradle was a little lower than his, so I figured if I, I, I said, I, I don't think I can get up there and do that because, you know, I had the idea of it, but I didn't think it was going to happen because my cradle could have got caught. I would have wasted a run. Mm-hmm. There went my score, things like that. So everything is going through my head, and I'm thinking I'm going to screw up. So he goes out there, does that perfect, and then in the two-wheel event, he does a donut. So if you're a fan, you haven't watched this very often, and you see eight guys go out there and do the same thing over and over again, mm-hmm. fail or not, and then you see a guy do a donut, they went stupid. They went crazy, and he just rolled over, and he got first. And I'm sitting there with my jaw wide open like, Tom, are you kidding me? So we get up there on the, the concourse, and... We get our trophy, and they gave out some medals this year for second and third, and Brandon Vincent and I, he drives Gravedigger, he got third, I got second, and we're sitting there looking at each other, and we're like, that was screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy for Tom. Yeah. I mean, if anybody deserves it, it's him. He's been doing it for so long, and beating his body up, you know, when safety wasn't a thing, and, you know, he does talk a little slow, but... He's still a good guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm proud of him. Awesome. Um, well, I, I'm excited for you, man. I'm excited that you, you're, you're chasing your dream. I'm excited that you're out and getting to be with all those other drivers, and that's that's so amazing. Uh, getting to represent Paris to a, a larger crowd, um, that's amazing. Everywhere well. I go, they ask me where I'm from, and I say Paris, Texas, and they're like, that, that sounds neat. I mean, you know, it's close to Paris, France. And I'm like, actually, our Eiffel Tower is a lot cooler than theirs because yep. it's got a cowboy hat on it. And they just lose it. They're like, oh, my God, a cowboy hat. That's awesome. Welcome to Texas. We, we love our tower, that's for <laughs> sure. Um, all right, guys. Uh awesome episode thank you guys for tuning in uh, as always we put out a new episode every monday so check in next monday for a new guest if you guys haven't go on to facebook follow my group um i will send out shout outs so you'll know who the next guest is you'll you'll even get a reminder the day i post the episode um and then if you ever have any questions you can ask me there on that facebook group um and yeah if you ever want to uh sponsor podcasts you can reach out to me at that group or you just flag me down when you see me driving around paris or whatever and i will gladly let you sponsor a podcast it's pretty cool um i I never in my life thought that people would want to sponsor something anything that i've done um so it's heartwarming that people want to be a part of this and again i want to give scott kennedy one more big shout out thank you so much man for sponsoring this podcast go get a bid from scott he will donate ten dollars to meals on wheels what amazing thing that he's doing right now go check him out go find him on facebook go look him up thank you so much see you guys next week